Hello and welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna make holster. Basically I start doing airsoft again and I've got this old universal holster but the problem with it is uh, when you put it in and you're running around with it, it you can lose the magazine so I decided to make one myself and this is how it came out. I made a few holsters before. This one is quite minimalistic, but I love this style. There will be a few videos after this one. I'll make a couple pouches and a few utility belt accessories. For this project you need vegetan leather. I use 3.5mm thick. Find a middle in the page. I use A3 page for this one. And I place the belt which I want to use for it. It's 40mm thick. Then I place the pistol on top and start drawing it out. Digital version of this drawing will be available on our website. But it's only for this type of pistol. Which is AAP01C. If you want to make one yourself for any different type of a pistol, Keep on watching this video and you will be able to make one for any type of a pistol. It's very important to mark the magazine release button so we don't make holster pressing it. I always grab the strap from same leather as I'm gonna use for the project uh, and I show you how to do all the measurements. First thing what we need to grab is how wide the barrel is. In this case it's 30 millimeters. So we need to divide it in a half and then measure and make a mark on top of the pistol. If your front side is quite big and it's sticking out, just add a couple millimeters to that measurement. And when you do holsters, just make sure it doesn't temper with any safety on a pistol. Now we're gonna grab a strap around and draw three lines on it. One on top and one at the bottom. It's gonna be our stitching line. Don't be too greedy with it because later on the holster will be too tight to take the gun out. The bottom line should be where the leather meet each other. If your front side is quite chunky, like I mentioned before, add those 2mm to those lines and stretch the strap around and measure it how much you need. In this case it's 10cm exactly. If you lay it down on the drawing, you can see where the stitching line should be. Second measurement we're gonna grab is the width of a barrel. It's gonna be where our stitching line is gonna finish. Then measure it with the ruler, same as previously, and note it down below. If you liked this video so far, please hit the like button. If you're interested in leather work, pop into our website which is qcrafted.com. For the stitching line I like to be precise, because that's the most important measurement in here. That's why I use that compass tool to measure where the stitching line should be exactly. I usually do the stitching line 4mm away from the edge of a holster, so I measure that with the compass tool as well. And now it's time to draw the shape. On one side we need to look at that button, on the other side it will be slightly different. 
popping onto our website and you can find this drawing there and you can use it as a reference. It's time to fit the loop. So what I do, I measure the wideness of a strap. Remember, don't go too far with the loop because there is a bend there, so the holster bends around the pistol. So don't go out further than the pistol itself. The loop I'm making is slightly on the angle because I like to carry the gun on the angle for the easier pull. When we're gonna do loop itself, we're not gonna play stitching line in the same place. We're gonna wet shape form it onto the belt so it's nice and tight. The difference will be around 2-3 millimeters on each side. So about five in total. This holster is made for right-handed. If you want a left hand carry, you need to place the loop on the other side. Before you start cutting out, make a copy of it and you work on a copy. So if you do any mistakes, you can correct it on the original drawing. I don't like the top bit and the bottom bit. We're gonna make small adjustments. That's why we create those copies for. And obviously before you cutting uh, it out again, let's make a copy again. So we will add a little bit on top and we take out a little bit on the bottom. So it's not the, the the shape when it's bent is nice and rounded. Back to cutting again. I think this one will be perfect now. Yep, now I'm all happy with the results. And time to cut out the part for the mug release button. Last bit we need to transfer the stitching line onto the other side as well. So we got both of them the same. And we can start cutting out the ladder. Choose the best piece for it because it needs to be quite firm. And gun is a gun, it's always safety reasons. So you need the best piece of leather you can have. I mentioned before, if you want a right hand carry, is that loop needs to be on this side and if you want a left hand carry you need to transfer it to the other side. I use scratch all to transfer the pattern onto the leather and uh, the stitching line itself. I'm only lightly marking it. I'm gonna use punching tool to punch the holes out. There are some tricky bits on the holes that is always. So I use combination of um, rotary cutter, utility knife, and sometimes even punching tools. So the tricky bit on this part is um, the mag release button. I use punching tool for that. You can use a big rounded punching tool if you got one.
when you're cutting thick leather with the knives you might not be always doing the right angles so I always use sandpaper to make the edge nice and square some places you can't access with just a sandpaper so I use Dremel tool with sandpaper a bit after that is best time to crease the edges but only crease visible ones where you got stitching line don't crease those now we're gonna do them later on let's clean up all the mess and start punching the holes out sometimes it's good to use a compass tool to check the how far is the stitching line from the edge and let's work on the belt loop so you scratch all again to mark the corners of the loop itself It fits like a glove but uh, now that stitching line we're moving it a little bit inwards for the holster and the ones which are on the drawing we're gonna mark it on the loop itself so when you stitch it in it bulks out a little bit So we've got everything prepared for dyeing. I used um, Norsel oil dye for it. I'm just gonna quickly show you how I did it, how I dye it. There is no point of showing you whole procedure. I made two thick layers on it. Because sometimes when you wet the shaping the dyed leather, it's gonna lose a little bit of a color. I usually do more, all my dyeing uh, at the end of a day so it dries out overnight and I can continue work in the morning. Yesterday when I was creasing the edges I forgot to crease the edges on the uh, loop itself uh, so we're gonna do it now and we can apply tokonol to it because it's gonna be hard to apply tokonol when it's stitched on to the holster. I want the edges darker on this project, so I'm using black tokonol on those edges. Use the saddle stitch technique to stitch it all up. What's your favorite part in making your leather goods? I think my favorite part is uh, the design process. I love designing new stuff. Usually when I stitch something thick like this, I measure the thread five times the length of the stitching line. And I like to glue together the things I'm stitching. There is not much stitching on this one. After, after stitching, I like to clean on the edges again with the sandpaper. And it's time to give the holster its shape. I use quite warm water and 
I'll leave it in the water for about two minutes. Wipe it with the uh, paper towel. I recommend to using gloves other than now that it's gonna lose so much color. I've wrapped my uh, replica in cleaning film. Remember, never use a proper handgun as a mold because uh, moisture can damage it. So I recommend to buy some cheap re replica or airsoft gun to use it as a mold for your holster. On top we need a little bit of space for the front side to go, come in and out from the holster. So I, I use this little piece of wood to create that space. If you got bigger side you need to use something more thicker like a pencil or pen. Best tool for shaping holster is your own fingers. Just make sure you got your nails clipped before you do that. And then you can use a little bit of a bone creaser or that little wooden edge slicker. But to be honest with you, you don't really need much tools. You can use also shapey marker. Like you can see, the um, mo most important area I worked on is the trigger protector. That's gonna be where our holster will hold the gun. If you make it right, you will not need any clip. If this video will be popular, I'm gonna make a couple more um, videos how to make different type of holsters. Wet shaping is quite a long process, you need to do it a couple times. When you take it out from a water, you do your initial shaping. Then you're waiting for the holster to dry out a little bit and then you make another one. And if you want to correct something at this stage, you can always make the area a bit more wet and shape it again. After a couple of hours, the holster being on a, my replica, I use heat gun to take the moisture out. And when you use heat gun, it also hardens the leather. So the holster is quite firm. You can also use hair dryer. Last time I've been there softing, I actually lost my magazine because of that rubbish holster I had. The new one just came in post. Right, the holster is completely dry. Now it's time to feed it and water treat it. So we first use neat's foot oil. I use cotton rack to apply it. Apply neat's foot oil only on the outside. After applying this, I like to use a brush to polish it and get rid of any dirt. Time to waterproof it. I use Fibbing's leather shin on it. I use cotton dowler and I apply a lot inside and layer on the outside, which I wipe off with the cloth. Sometimes I use also um, cosmetic pads for it, but I can see that it's better solution when you use dowler, you apply quite a lot of it and wipe the excess with the cotton rag. The last step we're gonna do is obviously the edges. We're gonna use black to color because I want uh, those edges quite dark. We're getting closer to an end of this video and uh, we nearly got the product ready. Please let me know in the comments uh, what you think about it. There is one more thing you can do. If your holster is quite tight still, you might use some leather feed or leather cream in the places where um, the leather has contact with the gun. That will allow to pull out the gun easier for a little while and then if you use it often you'll 
mold itself onto the gun perfectly. So we're done for today. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next one.